It's a long, hard struggle. I do not pretend that the U.S. believes that it is perfect. I do not pretend that everyone in the U.S. believes as much as I passionately believe in tolerance. But I do promise you that these are the ideals of the U.S., that tolerance and freedom of religion are central to our view of ourselves as a people, just as I think they are central to those of India. As the two largest democracies, India and the U.S., must continue to support freedom. Freedom will not live without your support. Therefore, you must join with us and continue the struggle for freedom and the freedom to practice religion. In many ways, the character of the future that these children here will inherit, that my children will inherit, depends on the success of our action and our cooperation in this difficult time. However, these shared values of freedom and tolerance give us a common bond. We have something very precious that we share. They also give us a shared responsibility to work together for a better future, yours and ours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. It's a privilege to introduce Dr. Zakir Naik. Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik is the president of the Islamic Research Foundation, IRF, an internationally renowned orator on Islam and comparative religion. He is the main driving spirit behind the IRF's striving and acclaim for proper presentation, understanding, and clarification of Islam, as well as removing misconceptions about Islam. Though a medical doctor by professional training, he has turned around to spread the truth of Islam to millions worldwide. At only 36 years, Dr. Zakir explains the teachings of Islam and convincingly clears misconceptions about Islam based on Quran and authentic hadith with reason, logic, and science. He quotes extensively and verbatim from the Holy Quran and other religious scriptures. Dr. Zakir is more famous for his critical analysis and spontaneous and convincing answers to challenging questions posed by the audiences and skeptics after his public talks in open question and answer sessions. He has delivered more than 600 public talks in the last six years in several countries in addition to many public talks in India. Many of these talks are available on video and audio cassettes. Dr. Zakir appears regularly on many international TV and satellite TV channels in more than 100 countries of the world. He is regularly invited for TV and radio interviews. He has authored books on Islam and comparative religion. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Was salatu was salam. Allah Rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahabi ajmain. Amma abad. Auz billahi minash shaitan ir rajim. Bismillah ir rahman rahim. Wa kul jal haq wa zaqil batil. Inna la batil akana zahuka. Rabbi shuhali sadri. Wa yassir li amri. Wa halul ugdatam lisaan yafkahu kawli. The respected chief guest, Dr. Richard Haynes, Dr. Amar Sena, Mr. Krishna Chanchoradia, the other dignitaries, my respected elders, and my dear brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. The topic of this evening's talk is Terrorism and Jihad, an Islamic perspective. And many of you may be aware that more than 20% of the world population 
they are Muslims. More than one-fifth of the world population consists of Muslims. But unfortunately, Islam is also a religion which has the maximum number of misconceptions. The people that have the maximum misconception about any religion as a whole is the religion of Islam, which also happens to be today the fastest growing religion of the world. And these misconceptions, I know, especially after the 11th of September 2001. And today, number one, top of the list, amongst the misconception, is terrorism and jihad in Islam. Whenever a person hears about a Muslim, immediately he starts thinking of a fundamentalist or a terrorist. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? A fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the fundamentals of a particular subject. For example, if a doctor has to be a good doctor, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of medicine. Unless he is a fundamentalist in the field of medicine, he cannot be a good doctor. For a scientist to be a good scientist, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of science. Unless he is a fundamentalist in the field of science, he cannot be a good scientist. For a mathematician, to be a good mathematician, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of maths. Unless he is a fundamentalist in the field of maths, he cannot be a good mathematician. You cannot paint all fundamentalists with the same brush, that all are good or all are bad. Depending upon the field in which a person is a fundamentalist, you can label him accordingly whether he's a good human being or a bad human being. For example, if there's a person who's a fundamentalist robber, a fundamentalist thief, whose profession is to rob, whose profession is to steal, he is a nuisance to society. He's not a good human being. On the other hand, if you have a fundamentalist doctor whose profession is to save human lives, then he's a boon for society. He's a good human being. You can't paint all fundamentalists with the same brush that all are good or all are bad. Depending upon the field in which he's a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. I am proud to be a Muslim fundamentalist because I know I follow and I strive to practice the fundamentals of Islam. And I know that there is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. And I challenge any human being in the world to point out a single fundamental of Islam from the authentic source of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. There may be certain people who may find that certain teachings of Islam, certain teachings of Quran, they are against humanity. But the moment you give the logical reason for it, the statistical record of the world, there will not be a single human being who can point a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. That's the reason I say I'm proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim. And I say in the same breath that for a Hindu, to be a good Hindu, he should be a fundamentalist in the field of Hinduism. Unless he's a fundamentalist Hindu, he cannot be a good Hindu. For a Christian, to be a good Christian, he should be a fundamentalist in the field of Christianity. Unless he is a fundamentalist Christian, he cannot be a good Christian. If you read the Webster's Dictionary, it tells us that the word fundamentalism was first coined, was first used to describe a group of American Christians who were called as Protestant Christians in the earlier part of the 20th century when they objected to the church. Previously, the Christian church, they believed the message of the Bible was from Almighty God. 
these Protestant Christians, they protested and they said that not only is the message of the Bible from God, but every word, every letter of the Bible is from God. If any human being can prove that Bible is the word of God, then this movement of fundamentalism is a good movement. On the other hand, if someone proves that Bible is